Welcome to the <laughs> Affiliate Marketing Group um, by Conceding, and I'm really excited today to uh, interview Laurel Bloomfield because she's someone who's an action taker. She uh, scaled her idea and her invention to actual retail. And a lot of people, they just think that, oh, I could have been the next, you know, I could have yes. pr produced that, I could have put that onto the shelves, and they just don't. So mm -hmm. Laurel actually did it, and today um, I'm going to be just kind of picking her brain to see how she does all the things. And for my Chrome Boss community, I know you guys are like, how do you patent, how do you patent? <laughs> And so we're going to also answer that question here today. Um, yeah. And a little bit about Laurel. She is also a co-author of uh, the book that it's called Air Fryer Secrets and it's coming out. I'm also an author in that book, so that's really exciting. Um, and she's a mom and she, interesting fact, she uh, lives with her husband on a cattle uh, farm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so, so you can, you know, have your invention and idea out there and kind of yeah. pretty much live where you want. Um, yeah. So with that said, uh, tell us a little bit about your origin story, Laurel. I really love uh, origin stories and I, and I think that's what a lot of um, my audience relates to and connects with. Sure, so sure. Myself. I'm just a regular mom who lives in the middle of nowhere. Um, I'm been an entrepreneur since I was a kid. Um, I grew up kind of in a poor household, not a lot of financial resources. It was a very happy childhood, but um, I was the oldest child and I ended up starting a business when I was nine or 10 that kind of helped contribute to pay the bills. And so I've always kind of had that sort of drive more out of necessity. And then um, I, high school, college, um, Married my husband, who is a businessman, kind of a really old-fashioned businessman. Like, you can't get more old-fashioned business model than a cattle rancher. <laughs> and um, we have a construction company as well. Um, but then I always had kind of uh, lots of ideas. And I think there's a lot of people like that who, who your mind is spinning and you're thinking of ways that you can make things better or it could work better for you. So you're sitting on all these invention ideas thinking that um, maybe maybe the obstacle is, well, I don't think I can afford an attorney, so it's just stuff. That's probably an obstacle for a lot of people because a patent attorney is pretty expensive. And in a lot of cases, they're really good to have. But there's ways to um, kind of format your business journey so that if you need a patent attorney later on to defend your IP, then you have the resources from your business to pay for that. Um, but you, what you don't want to do is go put your idea out there without getting patent protection. I think what a lot of people don't know is that you can get that pretty easily and pretty affordably um, doing it yourself. And so I built, um, I had an idea. I thought it was so, so good that I had to, we had to act on it. And, but I didn't think we could afford a patent attorney. So I just dove into how could I, how could I do that myself? And um, I did. I wrote that patent, that provisional patent application myself, patent myself, um, was able to go and launch that business while protected um, under the USPTO, which is the U.S. Patent and Trademark Offices. Yeah. And then generate generate revenue, kind of like actually test the idea, um, see if I had the skills to sell it, um, learn digital marketing. I barely had an internet connection. Like, I had dial-up for the first five years of our marriage. <laughs> like there was no even satellite. So you can do this and you can take your idea and you can build a business no matter what kind of obstacles are in your way. Um, and whatever industry you're in, like if it's Chrome extensions or um, your apps that, that you're building, or if it's, you know, a physical product, um, an apparel product, there's you know, a lot of the same principles apply across the board. And then if you don't have a product, you just have a million ideas in your head, it might be worth it. Like kind of filtering through those and being like, Hey, now that I know that I can go get a patent or get protect patent protection, maybe I should bring that out of my head a little bit further and see if it's actually something that I want to build or, or 
see if it's patentable and see if I can turn it into a, a profitable business that, that helps people with your ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like for a lot of people, they just dive in head first and yeah. they just make the thing and they don't think about protecting their idea at all. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's most of, you know, the people that I encounter. Um, but before uh, we continue, I want to say hi to everyone who joined us. Hey Jeffrey, hey Colin, hey Angelique, hey Damien, hey Marina, hey Austin, hey Mavine, hey Zeki, hey Greg. If you guys are here, definitely smash that heart button. I want the rest of the group to know that this is going on and I want them to really benefit from all the advice and um, just like the knowledge that's coming from Laura. So I go ahead and um, hashtag 101 if you're here as well. I want to make this fun. And if you have any questions and fears and concerns over patenting, getting your idea patented, patented <laughs> let, <A> hard one. <laughs> let us know because this is an interactive um yeah. interview as well um, totally and i i am going to try to ask the questions that you guys might ask so laurel a question that i would ask is um if you think that it's not that expensive how much is the actual expense to go and get your idea patented and how little does your idea have to be like how skeleton bare bones does it have to be or does it have to be super fleshed out okay so for the well, the first step would be your provisional patent and that can be a really broad idea um that that purpose of that is to kind of get you a is actually to get you a filing date so that you have this idea in your head i can almost guarantee you that someone else has the same idea mm, yeah at least at least one other person has the same idea. Yeah. Maybe thousands of people have the same idea. They're just not doing anything about it. True. But it's kind of a race to who's going to do it, you know, who or who's going to be the person five years from now to be like, hey, that was my idea. I could have made a million dollars. Like, it's, it's so common to say that because we all have good ideas, but I'm telling you, they're like out there. And if you're having that idea, someone else is too. So you have to take that first step and file for your provisional patent. And your provisional patent can be um, pretty basic. My, I'm gonna show you like an example. It's like a high school report. It's a high school report? Yeah, or just like a high school, high school report. report. This is my first provisional patent application. Like I've printed it up. It's like seven pages, easy peasy. And I had, I submitted like photos and drawings, um, a pattern, like, it's, it's not that complicated. And who, um, do you, who do you submit to? Your county? Your where? You submit to the USPTO, the okay. United States Patent and Trademark Offices. Okay. And there's a, a, like a $300 filing fee. Um, and there's some details, that, like there's a format you want to follow. There's like certain things you want to get in there. But you're, as far as your idea being completely worked out, you don't have to have it completely worked out. Like every detail doesn't have to be ironed out. You don't have to have a prototype yet. Like you just you just write down your idea basically. And if drawings are applicable, you draw your ideas. Um, if it's like a process um, instead of a product, you would still probably want to draw that out. Um, if you have any kind of prototyping, then you take pictures of it and submit that with your application. Um, as much details you can get in there, but you don't need it does not need to be completely worked out. So you yeah. can literally take your idea and protect it. Um, you wanna make sure that you're gonna take action though after that. If you take that first action step, that provisional patent gets you protection under the USPTO for one year. And then you have to file your full non-provisional patent. So that's your full patent application. Then that takes anywhere from two to five years to even get approved, mm -hmm. processed through the USPTO, but you're protected, your patent pending for that whole time. Uh -huh. So really, once you file that provisional, you wanna be able to like go out the gate and like start building your products, start building your business, building your brand, so that you're generating revenue and really proving your concept to yourself and proving yourself to yourself. If you haven't done business before, you it's like a big learning curve, you know? So give yourself that time, but be ready to like go. Yeah, because it's a race like you you made a point that some people like just put their ideas out there 
and don't even worry about protecting it. And oftentimes that's what you should do. Like if it's, it may not be patentable, don't waste your money and time on that. If it's not, I can show you, you know, really ways to dive into the USPTO database and figure out if it is patentable. But if it's, if it's not, then just move because that's what, that's what it is. Like it's a race to get your ideas out to the world. Who is first to market? Um, but if you can patent it, if it's unique enough to patent, then you definitely should because the benefits really outweigh what it takes to get you there. Yeah. And is there, um, and before we continue, um, hey, John, thanks for joining us. Hey. I always tell, I always say hi to them because yeah, I want them awesome. to know hi. that we are here. Hey, Jackson. Hey, guys, thanks for joining us. If you have, oh, Austin says, I think the process of doing patent is only about 300 for filing fee. Yep, correct. Yep. But people just steal your ideas anyway. Mm -hmm. um, what most people don't understand about patents, if you have to catch the person who steals your idea and then sue them, which is very expensive, not trying to burst any bubble here, but this industry is full of scammers who simply steals from others. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Positivity! Um, <laughs> let's stay positive here, Austin. Um, so, I don't know if I heard that whole like kind of question or statement. Um, that's a fear that a lot of people actually keeps them from moving. You know, like, I don't want to put my idea out there because someone's going to steal it. Um, but if you don't put your idea out there, it's going to be nothing, you know? And um, there are like, there are kind of elements to this industry or industry in general that like IP protection is just a game. I mean, like Samsung and Apple steal from each other constantly and they just call it a cost of doing business. You know, they'll sue each other for a billion dollars and they'll sue each other for a billion dollars and they'll, you know, but they got the idea out there first. So they made more money and they, they equate it to a cost of doing business. But I mean, I am, again, let's go back to like, I'm a, just a little old mom from Idaho, married to a cattle rancher with very, barely inter internet, always picked up my product and patented it and then scaled it to major retail. And so when I'm in dealings with major retail, do they have the resources to crush me? Absolutely. They could steal my idea. They could, but it, it's not worth it to them. I think a lot of people think that it would be, but that is not their game. And I, I've been in the rooms with them. I've negotiated with them. I've told them my idea. You know, I I was protected, and that makes me get the phone call a little easier. You know, I had the patent, but um, they don't want to steal your idea. You know, unless you are Apple and Samsung competing at multi-billion-dollar levels, um, it benefits Target to help and be an outlet for you know people like me and businesses like me. That is good for them versus. Like Walmart does not want to be in the news for stealing some little mom's idea. <laughs> That's horrible. You know, like, so I think that that is a mindset that a lot of people need to get over that there's some big, bad business people and they're all terrible and they're all going to steal my idea. It's not true. And if they do, you can sue them, but it's probably not worth it, but it's just not likely to happen. Oh. It's not likely to happen. Somebody on your level, on your same level might try to steal your idea that's where you have to be ready to move, like first to market. And then you could sue them, but it wouldn't be worth it. You just keep going, you know? Yeah. So I think that that's something that I think we really should hammer home, that you have to move forward in anything if you want to be successful instead of having your idea stuck in your head and regretting it later when somebody else does it. Because you're not the only brilliant person on the planet. People are thinking of the same ideas as you. Yeah, and that kind of reminds me on like what do we think versus what reality is. And mm -hmm. that's why I really like talking to the people who've done things because yeah. they know what the reality is and they, right. they can tell you, hey, like your thoughts are just myths and so yeah. there's so many myths out there, especially in in my community, one of my communities is Chrome Extensions and mm -hmm. right. they the, one of their fears is like Oh, uh, that already exists out there. I can't make my own. And it's kind of like saying that book already is written. I can't write a book that is like on no programming or on something, right. whatever book you're writing. 
and they just have that fear. And um, the reality is there's millions of shoppers online. There's millions of people. Even if that person spends the rest of their life, you know, selling, you have your version, which right. is different and you can still win. And so mm -hmm. yeah. um, that's like, I really feel reassured by the fact that you said that because I do think <laughs> like myself, I'm like, oh man, you know, if I have some idea or, you know, if someone wants to sue me, um, I'm so small. I'm such a small person uh, <laughs> in the whole grand scheme of things. Like, how can I even defend any, <laughs> you know, any of it? Um, yeah, but that's a, that's something that, like, even if you do end up in a, in a place where you would have to be in, like, an infringement lawsuit, like someone is stealing your idea, that's years down the road. You could have made millions of dollars on your idea already, you know, like don't let that fear, like where we're just in the discussion phase of like, I have this really good idea. I can't afford a patent attorney. Someone's going to steal my idea anyways. Like worry about the IP infringement lawsuit when it comes, if it comes like, don't worry about that now because you don't know the in between, like you, your eyes will be open to like, Hey, really? If you have a good idea, people will steal it. I mean, like, if you start producing in China, they're going to produce replicas. You know, like, I'm in the apparel industry. Of course, there's knockoffs. Um, but you're first to market. You establish your brand name, and you have protection in the U.S. You have recourse. You can protect it in the EU, too, or worldwide under the um, Paris Treaty Protection Act. But you you just need uh, to have your IP is, is really valuable, and, and you can't really foresee where that might lead or what doors that might open for you if you're stuck on the the lack mindset instead of the abundance mindset and if you're stuck on what people are going to do to you that could be wrong versus what you could do what good you could put out into the world with your ideas and your products you gotta go yeah that's amazing um hey guys uh thanks guys for hashtagging live hey yogesh hey Kalun. hey uh hey pat if you guys are here live, hashtag 99 and drop it in the comments and definitely smash that heart button. We want the engagement to uh, increase in this live so that the rest of the group knows that this is going on. I really, really appreciate the fact that Laurel is spending her time telling us, hey, this is, you know, don't worry, don't worry so much because you're stopping yourself from moving forward. You could have the next brilliant idea and just because yes. you're afraid of you know cost that you think oh my gosh um uh, there's no way i can afford a lawyer there's no way i can do this so i'm not even gonna attempt it right. and that's not the case so um i i want to ask you like why what made you move forward versus a lot of people who got scared like for mm. you for especially your industry uh apparel industry like yeah what was it that made you go you know what <laughs> i'm gonna do it yeah like, i don't care <laughs> so i am uh i'm a risk taker in general that's kind of how i made how i came here i'm also like um um a patient person, you know, like I, I don't see, I don't let like obstacles really slow me down. I mean, of course I'm susceptible to fears and doubts and all that, but I am pretty good at pushing those out just from like the way I grew up and, and things that I've been able to accomplish. Um, and I've had, um, like throughout my life, I've had some tough things happen and I'm sure probably everyone on here, cause that's life has had that. And um, some of those things have really opened my eyes to like, well, I don't really, you don't really know if you have a lot of time. And so what are you scared of? Like, what is there really to lose? Um, and then this idea that I had, I have a, a patent on a pocket that go, we put into clothing items and hey, pockets. Wait, can you say that again? A pocket? Yeah, a, a po pocket, a pocket. So like, like a little pocket. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know why I pocket, here. There's no pocket. A pocket's not a new idea. You know, pockets have been put in clothes for a long time. I think there is a total of mm, like three or four patents issued on pockets in the world. And I have one of them. Wow. Um, 
it's a pocket that holds any device or contents in place minus any closure mechanisms, no buttons, zippers, Velcro, but the um, contents will stay in the pocket no matter what you do. Like you could do a flip on the trampoline and your cell phone won't fall out per se. What, what happened as I was, as we were coming up with this idea and starting to write our provisional patent, a friend of mine had a little child who um, was misdiagnosed with the flu and sent home and ended up in a diabetic coma. Oh, and gosh. so type one diabetes, which a lot of people would know as um, juvenile diabetes, it's where like off, often diagnosed in youth um, and they put you on an insulin pump because it's an acute disease. It's not like the difference between type two is that it's a progressing disease and type one is an acute where as soon as the onset happens, your pancreas no longer produces insulin. It does not work. So they have to replace that with um, what they use now is an insulin pump. And it's almost, it's close to like replacing your pancreas. They're working on actual artificial pancreases, but the insulin pump doses that insulin. But it's like the size of a pager and it has like 10 feet of tubing and it needs to attach to your body. And so when that happened, um, he, he lived, thankfully, he actually didn't have any brain damage, which is incredible. But then after like the life saving and that kind of like trauma of like, my child is in a coma, um, she, her first thing was like, where the heck am I supposed to put this insulin pump? He was like a little baby. Um, and so we had our first prototype. Um, we kind of made our pocket a little smaller and made it a round design for that insulin pump, put on the smallest pair of like undies we could find, slipped it over his diaper, put his pump in there and away he went. And, um, she was like visibly relieved. So this isn't going to save your child's life, but it's giving you like this freedom. And it was so moving that we just started talking to other parents of type one diabetics and people cried to us that they needed this. Wow. So that's very motivating. You know, when you have a product that like actually helps people, yeah, it's pretty easy to like get through all of the crap of building a business and trying to make it work. So that really, Oh my gosh, I need to stop you there. Guys, <laughs> listen to that. <laughs> when you have a product that actually helps people and this sentence like tingles through my <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> I'm like then all the crap of all the little details it just goes away because you're going yeah. to make it work no matter right. what and i right. want you guys to let that sink in and you know sorry to interrupt you but it's like no. it's that moment okay. where where a lot of people, they, they say, oh, I built one funnel, it didn't work. <laughs> I did this one right. thing and it didn't work. And it's right. like, what, you know, what are you doing it for? What is that motivation for you? And for you, it's safe, it's relieving a lot of parents with all the stress of managing um, the pump. And yeah. it's like, it, it, people cry. It's something that they really need and they ask for. So right. that's, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. guys, you it, can identify in your business. I mean, it, there's a lot of ways you, I mean, it doesn't, I don't want to intimidate people that it doesn't have to be like a life saving thing. And you know, you don't have to have mothers call you in tears and thank you, but like you need to know who you are helping. And if you really can connect with the people you are helping, then they will motivate you to get through the crap. Because if you don't, then you leave them, you leave them in the dust, you know, and without the answer that you could provide for them. And that's what I would love to see more people like go out there and just file for the dang provisional patent and get your idea out there. Try it because you could really help someone. I mean, there are inventions much more meaningful than mine. I mean, inventions that could save, could actually save people's lives, you know, but don't sit on it. But even just making people's lives easier changes the world like a little bit at a time. Like even if it's just a product that just makes your sippy cup easier, you know, or like I'm a mom, so my mind goes to these places, but you know, or like a Chrome extension or, you know, an app that, that really does make someone's life easier. That's really meaningful. But if you, 
If you focus on like all the problems, then you won't ever get it out. And you certainly will never be able to make a business out of it. But if you focus on all of the good you're doing, then you'll, you can keep going and you can make it a success. Yeah. And um, I feel like it's so easy to get lost in all the things you can't do mm -hmm. versus all of the benefits that will happen if you only pulled yourself a little bit harder mm -hmm. and if you only, you know, figured it out. And with the right. internet, you know, you yeah. can figure it out. We have Google and YouTube. Um, yeah. So guys, um, I, I want to say hey to some more people. Hey Jason okay. for joining us. Hey Antonio, hey Desmond. You guys are so cool hanging out with us today. Hashtag uh, tw 200, <laughs> you guys are here. And smash the heart button. Um, what Laurel said and her message, her message is something that I want to also um, have you guys feel because it's, uh, you know, people can tell you all the technical stuff. They can tell you, okay, this is this and this is this and all the features, but it's really what takes action, what what will spur people to action is an, a mindset shift. It's that identity shift. And even something like an interview where she's sharing with you her story, it, it triggers that. And that's what I want to bring to you guys. I hope so. so. I hope that um, my story helps the one person on here feel like they can do this, that they have an idea and they can go out and get patent protection for it. But beyond that, that they can move, they can take action and build a business. Because I always say ideas don't make you money. Businesses make you money. And businesses are what change the world and help people. So you have to go out and build a business, but you, you have to first take the first step to get your idea even just out of your head. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier, there's, um, cause I do want to give them details as well. You mentioned earlier, there's some ideas that are patentable <laughs> and non patentable. Right? You, know, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. how do you quickly identify that? Or is it a long process to identify um, there, that? It's like a search process and intuitively you would of course probably like go to Google and Amazon and any kind of database you can find, um, and search out those the keywords that you would identify with your product, but then you need to go to the USPTO database and do um, patent searches. And that's a little bit more technical. I have a, a free 15 step guide on my website that I'll give you guys later. Um, but like you, you go in and you think, think of keywords in the USPTO search more like in engineering terms, like, um, you would, that wouldn't be an SEO keyword ranking word. So it'd be a completely different type of search that you would do on Google versus the USPTO site. Um, like engineering language, technical terms, like purposes and uses for your idea and invention. Um, and then you, you have to go through and like, um, find what's called a patent classification. There's thousands or millions of them. But you, you find a patent classification or a few patent classifications that your idea would fit into and you start searching out other patents that have the same classification. Um, once you get in there, the search is fairly intuitive, but you have to do this like technical bit. And then you find patents that like say you are inventing like an, um, a way for there to be more attention on your umbrella. Oh, oh, I want to give you a, I want to give you a, a scenario okay. because uh, some okay. of my, some of my people are, they're trying to create Chrome extensions and little okay. simple apps. So if that was the case, how would they go about getting the, you know, going about that process? Right. So they would first go to the USPTO site and they would start by searching terms, um, that are more technical, which is the way if you're creating a Chrome extension, you're probably a pretty technical person. So your mind works that way anyway. Um, and m like more engineering type terms and um, uses and purposes type terms. You would start searching the database in the USPTO search bar for anything like that. And then you would go further into um, what's called the CPC classification. And you would, uh, fig you would use some of those terms to try and find what your classification might be. 
Okay. okay, so when you file for the provisional patent, you're going to have to pick a classification, like class it's going to go under. You want to identify what that class might be, and you may, you may come up with the couple. Okay. And this is, this is applicable to any type of idea or invention. This is the process you would have to go through, whether it's an app or a piece of clothing or a piece of hardware or a, a process, um, anything like that. So then you find your classification and you start looking through like title pages of other already published patents. And in the technical market, like Chrome extensions and apps, I mean, you're not gonna have like 70 years of data to choose from. That's okay, that's probably good. You know, like I had to dig through like the first patent on a pocket in clothing. You know, I had to go like a long ways back. Yeah. And so I think with some of the more technical, you maybe have a little bit of advantage. You won't have to dig as deep, but um, then, then I suggest like downloading some of these patents that might be in, and even, even if you've already identified, okay, this is not a, a competitor of mine, but it's similar to mine, like different, different apps or different Chrome extensions that have patents on them, you want to download those and start reading. It's like not really very fun reading. <laughs> like, it will be feel like a really Let's get real here. It's not fun possible. reading. <laughs> you know, but yeah. that's what you need to do to kind of even get your mind around like, how do you write a patent? Like what's the language somebody uses in there? How do they put it together? So download those patents that are either like kind of similar to yours, parallel to yours, or could be, could be your idea. Yeah. Hopefully it's not, but you need to dig in and see if it is. And that's where you determine um, if it's patentable or not. Um, if you can, you know, there's a lot, of, there's, there's patents on pockets and pockets are not a new idea. Um, so you have to get kind of technical on, on seeing if you, fit somewhere in there if you have something that you found a lot of similar IP filed already. See if you differentiate enough to maybe warrant a patent. And if you get to that point and you're questioning that, I mean, you're totally welcome to reach out to me and ask oh, okay. me, you know? Um, and then there's a few more, like there's the um, European Union patent search database. There's like 90 million published patents on there. So you, those are the, the two places you need to look, to start looking and, and Google. I mean, that'd be the first place you would look, but I feel like most people already know that or even have already done that. Yeah. And then Amazon's a good database too. So. Oh, okay, great. So um, it, I feel like that kind of shortcuts a lot of the work. If there yeah. is like a template totally. out there that it's similar, not really exactly the same, yeah. but they they have all the wording and the right terminology to pass. Yeah, yeah. Start patent. studying that for sure if you're going to want to write the full patent yourself. Um, the provisional patent is you want to follow the wording, kind of make your provisional sort of like your pre-work to your full patent, but leave all that room in there to like really nail down your idea and your product over the next year. And then you can file and write your full patent, but keep those patents that you've downloaded, like in a file. I mean, I know lots of people don't like paper. You probably could store them somewhere on your computer, obviously, but I download and read. Yeah. It's not fun, but it's, it's good. <laughs> um, uh, hey, hey, Jason. Oh, I'll watch the replay later. Cool. Jason, Kevin, <laughs> Steven just joined. Hey, Kevin. Hey. hey Steven. Bill. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us. If you guys are here live, then hashtag 100, please. <laughs> uh, and then uh, we want to, the engagement to um, the rest of the group to know that this is going on. And also smash that heart button or like button or whatever button that you can smash. Um, Laurel is telling us, uh, just so you guys know um, very quickly if you just jumped in, uh, between patentable patents and non-patentable and how to save time going and searching for how to 
actually have something past the provisional license. Um, mm -hmm. You go and you go on the database and you, you search for similar patent ideas. You, you look for those technical terms that are what people would say within your industry. And so um, for her, she was researching pockets. And, you know, the first patent for a pocket was like a million years ago. <laughs> I don't know that long. But um, in the cool case of like little simple apps and Chrome extensions, I don't believe it will go back very far. So right. that's that's really cool. That makes me really excited. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, um, let, so let's say someone doesn't want to do all of that manual stuff. Um, where can they go to have something like that created? Are there already websites that already make it for you if you just put in your bare bones ideas? Because some people, they just don't want to, you know, they don't, yeah. they don't want to do that. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work. Um, so legally, if you're going to file for a patent, you either have to write it yourself or you have to hire a patent attorney. Patent so attorney, okay. You can choose. Now, what I've done that kind of squeaks in the middle line there is I've, I've formed, a, I put together a 15 step guide to like how you go through that USPTO um, search engine, then how do you write your provisional patent, like step by step, what needs to go in there? Like this is, the descriptions, how you would do that. If, and this is where your images would go or your drawings would go and then how to file. And then your filing fees a few hundred dollars. Um, and then I've also put together workshops, like a three day workshop where I will basically hold your hand and teach you how to, and we'll just write your provisional and submit it through oh, there. Are these workshops live or is it virtual? Yeah, I'm doing them live. The next one is on October 1st. Oh, okay. Wow. That's really cool. So, then if I can teach you once and um, you'll have kind of like the template to take, because I think like most people who have ideas have lots of ideas. Um, your brain doesn't really stop. And then now that you know that it's a low barrier to entry, you can go out and secure that you know, filing date through a provisional patent pretty easily. But legally I have to teach you and you have to do it yourself. Oh. So if someone other than a patent attorney offers to write it for you, um, they, you would have to make them like a business partner. Oh, really? Or, or they would have to be an attorney. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. yeah, I don't know any of these things. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. I'm learning now. And, yeah. and I am a big fan of workshops because it's like carving out time out of your life to really focus yeah. on one thing. And the ability to right. do that these days is kind of non-existent except right. in the form of like, hey, you you uh, invest the time and the money to sit down to have space. And space is yeah. really important. Yeah. And that's kind of how I wanted to, that's what I wanted to set up about it because so many people sit on their ideas for years. I mean, this is like so normal that people five years from now are griping that that could have been me you know that was my idea and i could have been a millionaire you know but this is where it like forces you to to take the action and we're going to get you patent pending in 72 hours 72 hours oh yes. my gosh what let me say hi to everyone who just joined hey michael hey arthur baka hey sean you guys, okay. thanks for joining us. I did not know that you could get it done in 72 hours. That yes. is awesome. <laughs> yes, we can do it in three days. I mean, some people may, like you said, it's good. The workshop format is good because you actually carve out time and force yourself to do it. And I think it's so important in this, um, in this realm because of how many people have just been sitting on their ideas, not doing anything with it. So let's just like knock it out you know, so that you can actually move onto the next step of building it into a business. And so it's a three day live workshop that I'll, I will like walk you through and we'll actually write your provisional patent. Oh, wow. Awesome. And um, I will most likely you have a link for it. I'll post the link in yep. the description after this interview. Okay. Um, and guys, if you are the type to not do something unless you sit down and actually do it, 
then I would recommend you going to her workshop because uh, yeah. Laurel, she actually, you know, she's been doing this for a while. She actually got her pocket idea um, onto retail. You know, you're learning from someone who's actually done the work and actually yeah. successfully um, gotten her patent and her idea out. And even like even being in the room, even knowing a person to um, uh, a deeper level than just watching her online and stuff, <laughs> it's it's huge. It's huge. Um, yeah. And so, uh, guys, if you have any questions, if if you're joining us live again, hashtag live or no hashtag two hundred and one. <laughs> and then <laughs> um, Antonio says. Um, Holy moly, holy gosh, three days is awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then um, Jason says, Cucumber <laughs> was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jason, well, <laughs> uh, I do know, like for me, when I first started my Chrome extensions um, back in November of last year, I did one and then I started making like a bunch and now yeah. it's like six and I'm like, oh man, I'm going to make so many more. And yeah. um, it never really occurred to me to even patent a Chrome extension idea mm. until recently Greg, one of the people in my Chrome Box community, he patented mm -hmm. his and he was waving his envelope. He's like, all right, you guys, you can't do anything because I have this patent. Yeah. <laughs> And um and that access like I was like whoa you can do that for the Chrome extent like whoa yeah. so um now I'm just I'm just really like interested in the possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, you guys, if you have questions, drop them in the comment because I I want us to answer your questions. Um, yeah. But uh, one of the questions I have is 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 there do patterns just um, if you don't move after a year, do they just like expire and die? Um, and if you do move beyond that, do you have like a time frame? You said sometimes it takes two to five years to actually get the patent. You're in patent mm -hmm. pending mode. Um, right. During like how long? I know for like DBA or something, it takes five years and then you have to renew. And um, right. for a patent, um, what is, what are the timelines with patents? Okay. So if you file for the provisional patent, you have to move, like you have a year and then you have to file your non-provisional patent within the year of the date that you filed. So you, my advice is that you go build the business. Like you start learning, maybe hopefully you already know some digital marketing, maybe hopefully you already have some of that J curve learning curve already conquered. Um, you just need protection on your ideas. So you can launch it out to the market. And then within a year, you need to file. Otherwise, um, if you have put your idea out to the market and you didn't make it go, then it becomes not patentable anymore because it's been exposed to the market. Um, oh, okay. So okay. you okay. need to make sure you're in a place that you're going to take action. I mean, you can get a lot done in a year or you can like I don't know Kevin's here he said that the average American watches five hours of TV a day you could sit on your butt and watch TV for a year and then you're out of luck and someone else is going to come along and do your idea probably but they also won't be able to get a patent because it will have been out there um, and then you then you file your not what's called non-provisional which is your full patent um, and that can take anywhere between two to five years to get through the USPTO. Mine took three total from the time, so two, three total from the time that I filed my non-provisional to actually being issued my patent. Mm -hmm. So then depending on the type of patent, um, there's a couple different types of patents. I won't go super into detail, but design and utility, um, they have different um, lifespans, like anywhere between like 14 and 17 years. 20 years, sorry, I don't know why I said 17. 14 years and 20 years. And then it's free for the marketplace. So like you see all these generic drugs in it and such, that, that's a really good example of, of the lifespan of a patent running out. And now we can come in and, and make a cheaper solution for people, you know, a knockoff drug or a generic drug. But they usually were patented for from 14 to 20 years. Oh yeah, I know for generic for drugs it's like seven years or something. After seven yeah. years, then they just 
you can do the generic. It opens up the market, yeah. right? So that's what that it's it's not lifetime, and you can't renew it. Like <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no, you can't. So, but I mean, twenty years is plenty of time to build a hundred million dollar business at least. Yeah. No, and if you if you're not going to do that, then it doesn't matter. You know, someone else can do it <laughs> in twenty years. So. And Tony has a question. Awesome. Okay. Thanks for Yay. asking, Antonio. Let's blast away. And guys, if you're here live, hashtag two. <laughs> and then Antonio, if someone patents an extension idea, does that mean that someone else cannot create a different version? People in China do it all the time with phones. Yes. Um, China is going to copy your idea. Like we talked about that in the beginning, you know, someone's going to steal my idea anyway, so why do it? Um, but they're gonna do it anyway, so you might as well move and, and take your market first, you know? Um, but you can, it depends on how strong your patent is and how strong you have written it. Um, but they can't, if you say you have like a process that your Chrome extension fulfills, you could patent that whole process. And I'm not very technical, so, but I would imagine if like you missed a piece in the process of something like that technical, that then it wouldn't work the same. So you can patent the whole process and then essentially they would have to come in and make something completely different to satisfy whatever need that you are satisfying with your idea. Um, but there are ways to get around IP, um, but it takes a pretty expensive lawyer to figure it out. So. If you guys are just competing with each other, then then you have a patent and you're protected. You got that process protected. Someone would have to be really creative and have a good IP lawyer to infringe on your patent. And so you have that protection, so you're free to just go and build your business. And momentum is is key. You know, you can outpace someone if you start before them. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially when you start selling, then you have the yes. cash coming right. in and then you can take that cash and build your business out of it. Part of it exactly. is cost of legal fees, cost of, right. you know, doing business. Um, right. So like run fast, get the cash and then be able yes. to pay and afford for all of the legal uh, yes. fees. Yes. I think that, um, Another point that maybe is probably really um, relevant in your space, in the Chrome extensions or app space, is that if you have IP, investors look at that as an asset. So oh, if yes. you are looking to raise funds, hmm. getting a patent is worth your time. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because they will say the same thing. Like, everybody can copy your idea. Like, I could just go make that myself. Oh, you know, man. why would I give you a half a million dollars? Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Why should I invest in you when someone else can just make it next door? Okay. Right. So if you have some IP and, and they still have also the same concerns like Antonio just said about, well, Chinese people are going to make it anyways, you know, then, but you still have a little more, like I've been in a lot of investor pitches, you have a little more gumption in that you have protection in the U.S. This is the market you're targeting first. You'll be first to market. You'll create the cash and speed favors. Yeah, speed favors every momentum. Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying with that. <laughs> I was, I thought you were gonna say speed know, favors the bold, out. like fortune favors the bold. <laughs> fortune favors the bold. Momentum favors speed. Like if you're first to market and you have a patent or you have a patent pending, um, and you're trying to raise investor cash that is a it's a big bullet point for them if you have ip ip oh. is intellectual property for anybody who yeah doesn't. if you don't know what ip means um jason said he's moving to giant china <laughs> oh my god <laughs> okay jason is hilarious um hey sean hey hey guys thanks for joining us um uh jason says let's talk money how much does this cost Jason, it's three hundred dollars to get your provisional to patent. file. Yep, your USPTO filing fee is um, for the provisional is three hundred dollars. Uh, the for your non-provisional, I believe it's like nine hundred dollars, which you'll have to do within a year. You know, um, and then I am putting on these workshops, 
and I'm charging $4.97 for the three-day workshop. Oh, that is awesome. And where is the workshop located? We're going to do it virtual, live virtual workshops. Okay, live workshops. Just do it online. Workshop. Yep. Okay, that, that makes Zoom. sense. I was thinking like live events. We could totally do that. That would be fun. But I have not done that yet. Oh, okay. Cool. So. Um, all right, you guys. Um, with the 10 minutes left, we are going to be wrapping up. I want to get all your questions answered, um, even Jason's questions, which are hilarious. <laughs> um, Greg says, you patent the process system features, not the code. You write in like a book copyright, a book you can change by 20%. If you change the process by then any other software will and cannot work the same no matter the code you write it in. Simple and great theft protection. Wow. It makes That's sense. awesome. Thank you for putting that in such intelligent terms. That that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he said it right. That's cool. Greg is uh, Greg is my the the person I mentioned to you earlier that he has a patent around uh -huh. his Chrome extension and his Chrome extension, what it does is it lets you stream through multiple Facebook groups. So if you go cool. live in one area, you can go live on groups and Facebook profile, Facebook page. Wow. And so that makes it really interesting because you know, yeah. you're know you using Facebook, but you can patent right. something that's sitting on top of Facebook and using right. Facebook. Um, so that means that Chrome extensions are fair game. To be patented. Yes. Uh, <laughs> my gosh, Jason. Okay, well, guys, um, where can... Oh, Greg is on his third software patent. Greg, you're, like, unstoppable right now. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations, Greg. Yeah. So, um, Laurel, so you have this live workshop going. Um, where can they go to find the link to that? Or Sure. So um, I have a free 15-step guide to filing your provisional patent yourself. If you want to just grab that, um, just go to my website, um, www.dreamersmakersdoers.com, and then it will funnel you through to the offer of the live virtual workshop, and you can register there. Okay, I put it into the comments. Um, Greg says, I think I would love to join your workshop as the stuff is close to my heart. Oh, great, Greg. That's awesome. I'd love to have you. Man, this has been such a fun interview. Um, I f Laurel, like, what, what, um, like, right now you are on a cattle farm, right? And you're doing all these things. What, yes. what is your, what are your plans for your future for, like, what's, what is up next for Laura for the next year? Okay, so for the next year, I'm working on a couple projects. Um, another apparel company that I've partnered in um, with working on their IP with them. Um, so we're going to launch that, um, get that into production, and scale that. It's a pretty big, exciting idea, so I'm excited about that. Um, and then I actually was able to sell my company and then this past six months have really been thinking about well i i did all this and i'm just a regular person <laughs> i know other people have ideas like me but they sit on them how can i help them see that they can go get a patent or they can build a business online or or they can scale their idea or product into major retail distribution because i did it so it's like a lot of things that i learned over the last few years that I want to share with people. And um, I'm just starting with those patent workshops to help people get their ideas out into the world because I, I really truly believe that a lot of people are sitting on tons of great ideas that could really help one person or thousands of people or save the planet and they're just sitting there and we need to get them out. So that's kind of my mission for the next year is to work on that and to help. I wanna help a thousand people patent their ideas and build a business are you creating um besides the live workshop live workshops are you going to create like a course or is there a way to consume the data um more passively versus being there live like um... yeah i think that eventually i will probably 
take what we kind of come up with in the lives um, and kind of flesh out what people really need and be able to condense it into a, a, a course um, for people who, who want it um, not in that three day, 72 hour intensive, you know, um, but also, also still continue to have that like live relationship. I think that's important too. Um, when I was scaling my product into retail, I mean, a lot of people ask me like, how did you do that? What's the secret? Like, you know, and I would literally tell you the secret is relationships. Like how the success you have is directly related to the relationships you build. And most people wouldn't think like a mom from middle of nowhere, Idaho living like, I mean, I like, I sometimes say I like have one foot in the 18th century and one foot in the 21st century. Yeah. Um, because I mean, my husband is like, he looks like John Wayne. Ooh. You don't want to make him angry because he's huge. Yeah. He's like the nicest guy in the world. But like, I live in the, I live like in the 18th century sometimes. <laughs> like I barely have internet. I mean, I have better internet now, but um, that you could do it too, no matter what your obstacles are. And that's what I really want to focus on. And then um, personally, we have one child and we want to adopt. Um, we'd like to adopt out of the foster system and get like a, a group of siblings so we could keep them together. That's what we want to do in the next year. So. Oh, that feels so heartwarming. And oh, awesome. thank you. <laughs> I, I, um, I saw this YouTube video of a series about it's like 11 kids and they adopted oh. five of their kids and they travel the world. And they're wow. like, whoa, <laughs> that's crazy, but hey, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> traveling with 11 children, like I have a hard time going to the grocery store with one. I don't know about traveling with 11. <laughs> just have like family of 11, travel the world. It's that's like crazy, that's awesome. That. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really excited for your message. I feel like it's an awesome one. Um, there's a, another question I have. What if you patented an idea and you did, and you feel like you're gaining momentum, but then you just don't do it? Um, is there some? Is there a marketplace where they like sell patents to each other, or do you have to let it, or or they have to let it die, and then or like mm. is there a patent application? No, you could you could sell your patent. Um, I would typically like if I sold the whole business, so I didn't just sell the patent, but. Um, I would have, if I wanted to just sell the patent, I probably would have gone to my attorney first and asked if there was any market, anybody he knew in his, you know, that, that it was like a vertical to that it would fit in their business. Mm -hmm. Um, it depends on, it depends on the business there, there likely is a community of people who would be your market, but it's just like anything else, like identifying your market, um, like of Chrome extensions, you probably have a community of people who would be interested in your patent. Mm. And if you did that before your like patent was up, that would be a good idea. Or even your provisional, your provisional is worth less money um, than a fully issued patent to oh, somebody yeah. probably. But um, you, you, I think that would be just the same as a marketing effort in any business. You would identify, you know, your ideal client or your ideal partner, um, and, and go to that marketplace. Okay. I got it. People are selling each other, like their Chrome extensions, like the exiting yep. out of something. If they don't feel like, Oh, this is not my baby. I can, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. go. Uh, so right. I can see how having a patent or provisional patent or, or some kind of patent will okay. increase the value of that Chrome extension is just not just an idea with some yeah, subscribers. definitely. Oh, wow. This has opened my eyes to <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right, Laurel. Um, thank you yeah. so much for joining yeah. us today. Um, I really enjoyed our interview. You guys, thanks for thank sticking you. around and having really colorful commentary. Um, yes, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I post, I'll post i post a link to her website in here so you can get that free 15-step uh, PDF guide. And yeah. then um, she does have a virtual workshop coming up. If you guys are kind of like, hey, I don't want to go through a guide. I want like the real person. And yeah. so she'll walk you through that process. It's three days and it's um, $497, $495. Yep. All right, cool. $497.
Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you, Laurel. I'm going. Thank you, guys. Was, I'm going to click uh, end live. So, bye, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs> thank bye. you. Oh yeah. If you like that video then you will love all the resources that I have over at kimcdang.com that is k-i-m-c-d-a-n-g dot com there you will find all my courses, my extensions, all the offers that um, I have as well as a lot of free resources if you are just getting started